Hello, Franz Spohn, and today we're going to use our imagination. I use my imagination all the time, but we're really going to focus on it today. And when you think about imagination, you put yourself in another world, or you look at something and get a mental picture of it, and as an artist, then you can get it down on a piece of paper or a sculpture or something like that. But today, I thought we would focus on literature and art. So a lot of times, if you're reading a book, not like a picture book, illustrators kind of lay things out for you visually. But when you kind of graduate into chapter books or novels or something like that, you read a book, and you form a mental picture of what the characters look like and what the story is about. And you have a whole scene in your mind's eye. And sometimes, if they make a movie from the particular book that you've read, maybe the characters don't look the same as you imagined, or maybe they have them exactly looking the way that you pictured. So I thought we would use a poem by Ogden Nash as a basis, and it's about a hippopotamus. Behold the hippopotamus, we laugh at how he looks at us, and yet in moments dank and grim, I wonder how we look at him. Peace, peace, thou hippopotamus, we really look all right to us, as you no doubt delight the eye of other hippopotami. So when I read that poem, I immediately thought, in my mind's eye, here's a hippopotamus in a pond or in some water playing, and a, uh, a child comes on, and they look at each other, and that's that moment of trying to figure out who's who and what's what. So that's the moment that I'm going to try to capture. And this is the finished piece. This is my solution. I just wanted to show you very briefly how I developed it, and then we'll try something to stretch your imagination. So the first thing, I never draw on hippopotamus. I went to the zoo, and I wanted to make sure that I had the correct number of, of toes and the way it went together. So I ended up doing uh, some more or less realistic sketches. Now, they have so many great animals available in toy stores now that if you don't have a zoo next to it, you can always uh, try that out. Then I threw these away, and I just started thinking about what a hippopotamus looks like in my mind's eye, and I started developing caricatures and then I finally came up with a composition that I felt was going to work between a boy in a swimming suit and a hippopotamus. Now, if you find a hippopotamus in your pond, don't get close to them, because actually they're very dangerous. OK, so done with that stage of it. And I kind of came up with a, a preliminary sketch. And I thought it looked OK, but I wasn't quite sure about it. So what I end up doing is tracing main pieces. And I think, all right, how close do I want the boy to be the hippopotamus? Over here, close up, maybe redraw the hand. And I do a final version on tracing paper. And so this is the basis of what my drawing would end up looking like. So for today, what I thought I would do is kind of simplify the process a little bit, because what I really had to use my imagination for was uh, the background. So I'm going to take a piece of an art board, and I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to trim it down. And I'm going to cut through most of the board so that what I end up doing is having kind of a pop-up structure. So we'll start with this. And I've already taken the liberty of coming up with a hippopotamus and a boy. And we'll put those on later. But what I want to do now is kind of develop the background. All right, so I'm going to start off with a piece of, uh, with a, a pencil and very lightly sketch things in. So if I have him in through here, I want the, the pond to kind of come around here. So again, I'm kind of creating my own reality based on the poem and on the characters. So I'm going to say, let's have the pond about here. So that way, the hippopotamus can be there and the boy can be here. All right, so that, that will work out. So I'm going to use some gel sticks, which work for this, because I can get a lot of color down. I'm just going to do like a little sketch here. So here, we're going to develop some shrubbery. OK. So, all right, so now I got my foreground there. And then I will take, now there's usually like a little bit of sand in kind of on a beachy area. And then I'll use one of my pens to kind of very quickly fill in some. All right, so there already I have the scene set. Then we'll have some plants, some leafy plants kind of in here, maybe some cattails. I could use watercolor to do some of this, but for right now we're kind of just developing the environment for 
Now, let's get some water in there. And again, I will, this time I'm going to use, this is a gel crayon, and it's a little more transparent. And kind of go in through here. And then let's get some sky in here. Then, you know, if I had more time or if I want to make it a little more detail, then I can get a little bit pickier about trees and shrubbery. We will put in a few kind of floral bits in through here. Okay, and now very quickly, I've got these little nails. Let's put our hippopotamus in there. Okay, so we got the hippopotamus. Now I can come back with maybe another marker and start putting some waves. Okay, and we can put the boy in there as well. And then when we stand it up, we have our little scene. So we've kind of created our own environment. You know, it's the characters, the whole procedure is part of my imagination. And it's a great place to be because create your own world, you get to make whatever happens, happens there. And it's also interesting to kind of see how it relates to literature, poems, you know, write your own poem, write your own story, and illustrate it.